Elements of a Good Lesson Plan Teaching is much more likely to be successful when guided by a clear and complete lesson plan. The key elements of a good lesson plan include objectives, timing, sequencing, differentiation, assessment, and materials. The first important question you should ask when designing a lesson plan is, what will students learn in this lesson? Think about the specific knowledge, skills, awareness, and language you want students to learn in the lesson. Make the objectives reasonable and attainable. That is, make sure that the objectives can be reached within the time you have for the lesson. In order to know if a lesson's objectives are reached, the objectives need to describe something that can be measured. Because of this, a lesson plan objective should describe behavior that can be observed. Good lesson plan objectives describe what students should be able to do after the lesson, not what they will know. So, for example, an objective of this current lesson is for readers to know the key elements of a good lesson plan. To word this in a way that can be observed and measured, we can say that after this lesson, participants will be able to describe the six key elements of a good lesson plan. Sequencing describes what will happen during the lesson the order in which it happens, and how you will transition between activities and to the next lesson. Considerations for sequencing could include when is the best time to do a certain activity, and what is a logical but meaningful way to organize the lesson. The sequencing of a lesson should support the lesson's learning objectives. Many lessons follow this structure. Warm-up, introduction to the class topic, presentation of material, one or more activities for students to practice, evaluation of the practice, and application to a relevant activity. We want learners to be able to apply their new knowledge and skills to authentic, real-world situations. One of the best ways to achieve this is by slowly removing the teacher as a director. Activities early in a lesson should include more direct guidance from the teacher. As the lesson progresses, learners should be given more independence. At the same time, we are moving students from more surface level memorization and identification tasks to higher level interactions with lesson material, such as applying, analyzing, and synthesizing. While it is important to be flexible when teaching, it is also important to estimate how long each part of the lesson will take. This will help organize activities and determine what is possible to do in a lesson. Never forget that learning takes time. Make sure to give your students plenty of time to process an activity or engage in new learning. You will have a variety of students in your classroom. How will you support students who need extra help and students who need to be challenged more? When writing your lesson plan, make sure to include details about student interaction. For example, will they be doing pair work, individual work, group work, or be listening to the teacher presenting information? Make sure that your lesson includes a balance of interaction during the class, as this can help with differentiation and create a learning environment that is productive for multiple learning styles. Providing detailed notes in a lesson plan regarding what challenges students might have and how you might avoid or lessen the impact of these challenges can help a teacher adapt 
for differentiation. For assessment of student learning, how will you know what students have learned? How will you know if the learning objectives were met? Will you ask your students comprehension questions? Will there be a short presentation, drills, a short quiz, a written assignment, or a group activity where students must use new learning to complete the task? For assessment of the overall lesson, do you leave time at the end of the lesson to gather feedback? Is there a space for you to take notes on the lesson plan? After each class, try to find the time to reflect on the lesson and identify what worked and what did not. In order to implement a good lesson, you need to know what materials will be necessary. This can include books, pens, handouts, and so on. Making sure to obtain the necessary materials before class is important, as it saves time and helps teachers feel more prepared. Now that we have looked at the six essential elements of a good lesson plan, your next step is to take a comprehension quiz which will not only help you review these concepts, but also think through why these six elements should be included in a lesson plan. Here are the references used for this presentation.